Hey, we've got a problem here. What did you do? Nothing. I stirred the tanks. Whoa. Hey. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. We've got a special guest here for the first time, John Leone from 616 Comics. You probably heard me mention the name a couple of times. They, he's His comic shop is partnered with Comics Elite with some exclusive covers that we talked about here on the channel. Welcome back here, John. Good to see you. Hey, thanks, Wes. Thanks, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. So this has been a big, uh, big month. This is when Penguin Random House essentially takes over as the <clears> exclusive <throat> distributor for Marvel Comics. We know IDW is following along with them. And I think there was probably a lot of hope that uh, maybe some of the issues that, that comic shops have been experiencing with Diamond would go away and you'd be getting something closer to what we were been hearing about the Lunar experience with DC Comics where the distribution has been very good. From what I've heard from you, that has not been the case, at least in the first shipment. No, sir. Um, there was a lot of hope, not only for me, but from a number of retailers that I talked to on the daily, on, on the regular and the first shipment i started getting text messages on i think it was friday from other retailers and i was getting pictures of boxes that were destroyed comics that were really really badly dinged up and i was just hoping and praying that it wouldn't happen to us and unfortunately it did um i i didn't place a huge order because i was kind of you want to hedge your bets Exactly. I wanted to see like, hey, how's this first order going to come in? We do a lot of retailer exclusive variants. We do partner with Comics Elite. We do a lot of Marvel retailer exclusive variants and we have a lot in the pipeline. And so this first shipment, unfortunately, was disastrous. We had over 66 percent damaged and it's two out uh, of every three. Absolutely. And all of our ratio variants, except for one, was damaged. We ordered a bunch of ratio variants for uh, ASM 75 and even this Sense. this gorgeous Ditko hidden gem variant was damaged. All of those were damaged. One of those was for me. <laughs> so <laughs> really, really disappointed in that the boxes look like they had been rolled down a hill in San Francisco is and I and I'm in New Jersey outside of Philly. So if that gives you an crazy. indication. Yeah, because and we so looters kind of have sent the benchmark and said, "Hey, if you want comics delivered, you have to minimum, or at least damage to a, a minimum." Or, you know, obviously there's going to be damage here or there that's going to happen, mm -hmm. but if you really want it yes. not to be damaged, you have to have bubble wrap in there, really good packaging. Everything yes. needs to be tight. We know Diamond; it, they said they were going to do it, but it doesn't appear that they have. But no. it doesn't feel like uh, Penguin Random House learned that lesson. No, and and I do. My, my sales rep at Penguin has been great. Let me just say that. So the individual people that work for Penguin Random House, I, I don't I don't fault the, the people that I've been working with. I just don't believe there's been communication between maybe the sales reps who are talking to the retailers like myself and the warehouse operations. Because what's happening is our books were shipped in a box. Now, I took this box apart so I could show it. This is the box that it came in. And as you can see, there's a lot of corner damage to the box and it's single wall construction. So the comics are placed inside the box. They're directly up against the, the inner walls or the outer walls of the box. There is no outer wall, really. You need to ship this box within a box and then with insulating material in between. There's none of that. It's just the comics are up against the this single wall construction cardboard. So the first time the box gets dropped inadvertently uh, or by a sloppy delivery person, um, you're going to have all the comics in that corner and, and up, up that side are going to be damaged. All of them. There's, there's no protection. It's crazy. See, we know the Penguin Random House obviously has been distributing books around the country and the world for a long time. They, they certainly have a lot of knowledge in this, but they haven't done comic books and comic books are obviously different than, than regular hardback or even, uh, you know, soft cover books. But there's also another big difference that perhaps Spangler Random House hasn't taken into account, or maybe they did, they didn't really fully think about it, is the inherent collectability and potential value of every one of those comic books that's being delivered that is destroyed if it's not delivered, you know, in essentially pristine condition. Yes, it, it has to be, especially when, when we're ordering, and you talk about it all the time, Wes, there's these different schemes, and I, I'm not using the word scheme in a nefarious way or... A, 
a negative way. I'm just saying they have ratio variant schemes where if you order a hundred, you might, you might get, you know, one of these where you're mm -hmm. not going to find this. And, and so this is going to be worth, you know, 50, 75, a hundred dollars, perhaps it's not worth even half of that if the corner smashed in. And I'm not sure. I think they understand that. I just don't know if they thought through the execution part. So I did send an email to Marvel penguin random house and the customer service at prh and i and i looped everybody in i looped in david gabriel from marvel who's been tremendously helpful to me and my business over the last year two years i looped everybody in and i said hey unfortunately going forward we are not going to be ordering weekly marvel books we're going to pull out entirely unless and until this packaging situation gets handled and we do have some very big exclusives coming in we have four thousand venom number one retailer exclusive variants coming in um and they they told me two weeks ago they said we don't guarantee that it can be pallet shipped so the email i sent yesterday i was very adamant i said they they must be pallet shipped i cannot have four re four thousand retailer exclusive variants coming in in these boxes that just can't it just cannot happen because 66 percent damages on four thousand comics a that's a lot of, of books yeah it pallet shipping isn't cheap for you you actually have to take a mm -hmm. pretty big financial risk on that one but you're willing mm -hmm. to do that on these you know store exclusives because that's your comic yes. book it, it's being printed and the cover's been done specifically for you guys you know would it be too much for you to consider like doing uh if there was available to do pallet shipping on everything or you you have to kind of take your opportunities when it's available yeah i i do uh i do try to get pallet shipping when we have when we place big orders, which has fortunately enough for us been almost every week. But like, so if there's a weekly, like, so in December, there's some weeks that are going to be light. I'm anticipating mm -hmm. with the holidays and everything. Plus it's a five week month and it's the holiday. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Yeah. yeah. So, so this December, like it depends on the week uh, for pallet shipping, but certainly for all retailer exclusives, I've, I've had retailer exclusive ship, not on a pallet and damages are just very high. Because carriers are carriers, they're they're not used to handling comic books. My FedEx guy is handling all kinds of different packages. He doesn't know that there's necessarily comics in there or something else in there. So, unless you get it shipped on a pallet, you're really taking a huge risk, and it's unless hard it's because lunar, right. Oh, I'll tell you what, Wes, with Lunar, <laughs> and and I said this in the email, not to be salty with PRH or Marvel, but I said. We had more damages this week with Penguin Random House than I have with Lunar all year long. That is not and an it was exaggeration. A shipment. Yes, we only ordered a few hundred books this week. That's so crazy. with Lunar, there's hard. I was just joking with Sean at Comics Elite about this the other day. He can't even remember the last time he reported damages to Lunar. So, you know, and, and I may I may report occasionally if there's one or two that looks like they may have been mishandled, but Lunar's packaging is is spectacular. And what that does for me as a retailer, it increases my confidence. So then I order more books. Mm -hmm. But if I have less confidence, I order less. My diamond orders over over time have shrunk very significantly. Unless I'm ordering a retailer exclusive variance and the corresponding ratio variance, my orders are small. And I've heard, uh, you know, w with Lunar, they also tend to arrive a lot earlier you know diamond is show <laughs> yes. up on tuesday you know for your wednesday you know new comic book day yeah and sometimes not even then wes sometimes i get my diamond pallet on like thursday and then customers are emailing and they're saying why haven't you shipped my books yet and i'm saying i'm like they already i already bought it online if they were going to come into the store i don't even have the books yet and i'm like i don't even yeah. i can't even tell you when i'm going to get them and so there's just been an overall problem with with diamond with that and uh a few other things but i will say lunar has been a wonderful experience and we know scout followed dc over but it, apparently i believe that they're the only publisher so far yes um, and, it's, it's, and uh it's, it's sad because idw just opened back up for retail exclusives and they went with prh so i have a uh a godzilla versus Ghidorah exclusive variant in the works and uh now i'm worried about that Unless I can get that pallet shipped, I'm very concerned about that. I suppose the release in December. So this just places me as a retailer in a very bad position. 
And again, I'm, I don't want to think, I don't want people to think that I'm coming on your show to, you know, talk trash about PRH. This was just a fumble, uh, right on the goal line. This was a bad first look, you know, and it, this is the first time they've distributed comic books in the history of the company. So yeah. there, were, there, there was definitely the potential to be some uh, shortfalls here and there. You just weren't expecting 67% damages Correct. on the first go around. Yeah, and this is easily solved. If they put these boxes they ship the comics in inside of a larger outer box and insulated it with packing material, we're good. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would have had any damages because the comics on the inside of the box were handled very well. Everyone knows this, this is not a shock, but Marvel covers are very, very flimsy. It's yes, like- They're like inside paper. It's toilet paper. Yeah, it's yes. inside paper on the outside. Yeah. Um, DC Comics, especially the cardstock variants, mm -hmm. much, much better quality. Yes, much heavier cardstock uh, or paper stock. But so we've gotten a lot of books from Diamond Marvel books that are just mishandled by the, by the packer and you can tell by the damages. These, these books were handled very well by the Packers at Penguin Random House. My, my books, anyway. Mm -hmm. It's just in shipment, they were <clears throat> almost completely destroyed. Well, I know you, you probably had to be very hopeful because uh, a lot of people have had frustrations with Diamond Comics. I've heard specifically if there's one branch of, of Diamond's distribution, it tends to be worse. But you know, the, the general feeling is, is there's hope that them going over to Marvel, you won't experience all the issues that you have with, with Diamond. You always hear about them putting collectibles on top of comics or just throwing mm -hmm. in your uh, your your ratio variants just as an afterthought, even though those are the most valuable comics that you're getting. And you mm -hmm. were telling me you've even had problems just getting your ratio variants. Yeah, yeah. so one of the reasons um, or one of the factors involved with deciding to do a retail exclusive variant because it can cost anywhere from $2,000 to $20,000 to do a retail Enormous exclusive. Risk depending on the size, right? Especially if it's a Marvel variant. I mean, you're talking a lot of money. So if there are really good ratio incentives, we will do the variant more often than not. We did Marvel Voices Identity number one. We had a gorgeous Young Yun Yun Silk and Psylocke cover. And I decided to do that title because there was a gorgeous uh, In Hyuk Lee Virgin Shang-Chi variant. There was a really nice Peach Momoko. I think it was a one in 50 Virgin. There was a Philip Tan, one in 25. The order comes in on the pallet. I'm like, wonderful. Going through the boxes. <laughs> we empty all the boxes. No ratio variants. I have to say, this is not uncommon for us with Diamond. For me, I'm just talking about my experience with Diamond. They audited out my ratio variants on the regular. So then I report the shortages and Diamond says, sorry, we're sold out. And I'm like, what? Well, <laughs> What am I supposed to do now? I pre-sold like 60% of these. Now I have to refund thousands of dollars in, in pre-orders. Customers think I'm hoarding them, especially if the if the variant gets hot on the secondary market. They accuse me of basically, you know, conniving to, you know, use this for myself later to sell it for another 10 or 20 dollars to another customer. So it just I get very negative feedback online. Customers don't really understand the process. I don't think that they necessarily should. This is something that retailers have to deal with. And those but, ratio variants were mitigating your risk. You took an enormous risk yes. making this cover and you get you get these really cool exclusive ratio variants to mitigate and yeah. pull in some extra money and cover the expenses and the enormous risks. Because if you can't sell that that exclusive cover because no one cares about that comic book, right. you're eating it. <laughs> you're definitely going to eat it. And you know, uh, I've been told this by more experienced people in the game before who, who do exclusive variants. You know, you're going to strike out. You're going to have a cover that you think is gangbusters that's going to sell like crazy. And then you launch it and you sell six. <laughs> and and so sometimes you know, I've... Comics, you got to buy 3,000, right? You have 3,000 minimum. Yes, sir. Uh, 3,000 yeah. minimum trade dress. And we usually do a 1,000 print run version because people love the version. They love the sets. But... Mm -hmm. There's books I've launched where I'm like, this is going to do great, and it bombs. And so what helps mitigate the risk but the ratio variance? And then when you don't get the ratio variance, it's a real kick in the teeth on top of that. So it's like getting hit twice. Absolutely. That's, that's, uh, it's crazy with all the, the issues. Uh, you know, we, we did, I just did a video yesterday where Todd McFarlane was saying that but he thought maybe DC and Marvel had been short-sighted. I was like, I, if you haven't seen anything better coming out of Diamond – Right. What? What is? How could you expect them to improve? 
there doesn't seem to be any innovation on diamonds and i agree with doc uh there doesn't seem to have been any innovation and todd was talking about companies that you know we're on the dow jones maybe back in the 60s or 70s or out of business now well well yeah but that's the, you could make that i think he's overlooking the argument with diamond they haven't innovated at all so they're going to be one of the dinosaurs yeah you gotta you gotta keep up with the joneses you gotta keep up with the technology and what the market is and, yeah uh, for sure that's 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 crazy you know because here's the thing I, I bet you know this obviously better than i do but the margins on selling comic books at least new comic books are very thin mm. They you got to know your audience. You got to know exactly how to order, or you can put yourself mm -hmm. in a very bad state. And, you know, if you get a, a, a ship at 66% damage out the gate, a lot of those you're not going to be able to sell at cover price. <clears throat> no, not even if I get the replacement. So that's a great point. So let's say I get the replacements next week. Those, those people went elsewhere to buy those comics. Yeah. And in the meantime, if I have to convince people to keep pre-orders, and a lot of times they'll just cancel and they'll say, well, I'll go get it from my, my LCS or I'll order it online somewhere else or wherever. Um, I'm out and I don't think I've tried to explain that to diamond before I'm going to have to explain that to penguin, uh, at this point, because if, when, when the damage books comes in, you can't make me completely whole again. You just can't do it because this is a time sensitive product. The demand gets hot. Yes. The demand is very high on the week of release. And if I try to sell them a week after release, I mean, you know, this Wes, how many books stay hot, like nice house on the lake. That's a book that stayed yeah. hot for weeks something is going to the children number one yes something that's like that very you only rare. get so many ones a week number ones a week right yes sir that's very rare and the amount of books that spike and hold their value on the secondary market after release date is is also low that's what drives those speculators that dopamine hit of every one in 100 type of book you know will will spike that's that's what drives the, the, the that speculator market to try to find that type of book as a retailer, I have to bank on 99% of books won't do that. And I have to order accordingly. So then when I get damages, I'm, I'm just, I'm basically eating them. Even if you send me the books later, I'm just going to put them in storage. They're just going to sit imagine there. Some of the viewers are going to be like, well, John, but you do a great job. You got this huge company and this huge business. You have a family run <laughs> business. Your family is yes. literally at the mercy of these distributors. If they're not able to, to supply their comic books in pristine order or it's being, it's, pristine condition for your customers yes and you know there's a lot of people's livelihoods you know specifically your family that are kind of depending on it yes all the employees are my immediate family <laughs> <laughs> i have four kids they all work here my daughter just went away to college uh so she's not working with us too much right now um my mom i convinced my mother to retire from her depart long time department store job she works here my wife works here and so when this happens um my family knows on on you know tuesdays and some of my other partners know on tuesdays when i'm supposed to get shipments sometimes i'm really uptight and really nervous because it's very stressful because if that week if if, if the package is arrived damaged you're destroying our income potential for that week in essence so this is this is serious you know people are like ah oh, these retailers like one one person i talked to he was always complaining that i was complaining about diamond i said you don't understand this is my whole livelihood so when they when they don't show care in executing our orders right in executing the fulfillment of our orders that directly impacts my livelihood and my family i don't think you understand that like this is serious for me it's not just comics this is like our life this is college tuition. This is house <laughs> yes. payment. This is food on the table. Now yes. there is hope. This is the very first time they've done a shipment. Hopefully, if they've received feedback, we know you gave them feedback. I imagine other retailers oh, if they had issues gave them feedback. If they respond to it, they come in in better conditions the next time. There, there's hope that maybe the stuff will all be mitigated, and you know the the Penguin Random House deal will end up being very good for for um, for for retailers. Yes. This has to hope. There's still that option out there because it's only been one mm -hmm. time. It's only been one time. Like, so I, I told them I'm ceasing my orders as of now. Mm -hmm. Unless they can tell me they're going to double box everything, I'm not going to order anymore. I just can't take that risk, Wes. Every week, I can't, yeah. I can't have this happen every single week. I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm getting older. So my, I got to watch <laughs> my blood pressure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, John, I know that you're going to be at New York City Comic Con. Are you going to have any more exclusives for that? Uh, no, Comics Elite. Uh, my friends at Comics Elite will be there with a the table. 
Uh, I'm just going on Saturday oh, to meet up with some friends. Oh, you're going for a visit. Yeah, I'm just going for a visit on Saturday. Uh, we'll be at Baltimore. We won't have a table. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like the network at, at conventions. So I'm not saying we'll never have a table, but as of right now, I like to network. I like to talk to other shop owners, maybe form some partnerships. Talk. To, I love talking to artists because we produce probably 15 retailer exclusives every month. And I love talking to artists. I love getting their feedback. The, the, the creative process of producing a retailer exclusive variant is um, it's thrilling. So we're, we're going just to basically network and, and make contacts, but we will be at New York floating around. I won't have my cap shirt on. I'll have a 616 shirt on. So if anybody sees us there, definitely come up and, and say hello. We I mean, love the chat. The logo's right over your shoulder there. Right. Now, people are like, Hey, I like this John fell. He's a straight shooter. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind helping support him there. You do have, mm -hmm. you have e-commerce, right? We do. Yeah. We have uh, the 616comics.com. We're on Instagram. We do live shows on whatnot. Uh, we have a Facebook page and, you know, we're always willing to, to hook in with new people. And we have a Patreon as well with discount codes. And whenever we sell out of something and then we get damage replacements, I always put it up for our Patreon members first. So it's patreon.com slash the 616 comics, I believe. All right. So that that information will also be in the uh, the video description. If you want to go out there and reach out to 616 comics, they've got a lot of uh, exclusive covers just waiting to be discovered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for our people outside of the New Jersey, uh, Philadelphia area. Yes, sir. And I do want to say, John, thank you so much for coming on, telling the, your story about your first shipment from Penguin Random House, some of the issues you've had with Diamond, how uh, you know how nice it's been to have Lunar come aboard to take out at least some of your your issues as far as distribution, and uh, you know really putting a face and an idea about all the issues that a lot of uh, retailers are experiencing right now. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, Wes. I really appreciate it, sir.